under the scope. Hey, scope people. Guess what? We got a scope movie review. It's cold. We're on the road. We're handheld. Uh, you know it's cold when we're handheld yeah. because the suction our... cup is not holding up. Exactly. <laughs> So it is a freezing, freezing evening here in Minneapolis. It feels like January, but it's only November. Uh, but November means one thing, Jared. Oscar movie. Oscar movie. I think we. I, I'm not going to comment on if, luck this, the if this is an Oscar movie, but it has been in the uh, the lexicon in the public awareness. It's for, in the conversation. It's on the short list. Thank you. Uh, what movie are we talking about? We're talking here? about the theory of everything. The uh, biopic about. Uh, Professor Stephen M. Hawking? That's w. Good. Hawking? Whatever. Stephen Hawking. You know Stephen what I'm This camera's going to be all over the place. Sorry. Yes, I like Sorry, it. folks. I like it. Cinema verite. Cinematography <laughs> in action. Um, Jared, uh, you spent a lot of time memorizing the stars of this movie beforehand because you knew I would. There's only a few names you need to know. Go ahead. You have, in the starring role as Stephen Hawking, you have Eddie Redmayne. Yes. Star, not star, but a supporting actor in one of your favorite films in the past, Les Miserables. Ugh. I know you love it. At least he didn't sing in this one. <laughs> uh, uh, paired with him as Jane is uh, Felicity Jones. A glowing Felicity a Jones. A glowing Felicity way. Jones. What do you I'm think a, about that? I'm a big fan of her. All right. Um, and a couple of other supporting characters that are, are, are important. I forget his name, but his sort of the lead professor at yeah, Cambridge. Maybe his mentor. His but mentor. It, his, but clearly his intellectual lesser. Sort of becomes one of his uh, his better friends, yeah. uh, played by David Thewlis. And, or Thewlis. He's, sure well, he's the it. one from uh, yes. Harry Potter. I recognize yes. him. Yeah, yeah. He played the werewolf in Harry Potter. And, uh, boy, this is this is tough. I gotta get, I'm I, sorry, Jared. I'm I gotta, sorry. I got to get my, my arms back here. Um, <laughs> and uh, later on, we have a character, Jonathan, uh, played by Charlie Cox, whom uh, you will see coming up in uh, Netflix's Daredevil series. Yes. He plays Matt Murdock in there. Uh, and uh, if you watch Boardwalk Empire, you know him as Charlie. Boom. Is it Charlie? I don't know if he's Charlie in that one. <laughs> he's... That's his actor name. Anyway, he's from Ireland in the in the in the Broadwalk Empire. So there you go. Those are the, the main players. Directed by Jim Marsh, who I don't recognize from anything. Fair enough. Yeah. So it is. Well, it this is, is this is a trick. I'm sorry, Jared. <laughs> okay. People are gonna love this. We're gonna get a million hits on this. No, they're not. <laughs> um, so the story starts in 1963. You have a young. Hawkins at yes. Cambridge University. He's a PhD student at Cambridge, and he is working on his thesis. Trying to, he's he, from the beginning. He's trying to find the the, yeah. the the elegant theory of everything that sort of explains how everything in the universe he works. knows what he knows. Jared. He's a very very smart guy, but he's also uh, you know charismatic to a certain point. Yeah, in a nerdy way. Yeah, like us. Uh, he happens to uh, catch the eye of Jane at uh, at some sort of. Uh, school function mm -hmm. uh, she goes she's there with a friend and uh, yeah they just sort of hit it off right away she must uh, I don't know they have conversations she's a she's a Christian he is not yes <laughs> uh, and that's sort of a point they sort of debate over yeah. uh, a bit over their lifetime but eventually they uh, they fall in love and they get married and, and that, that is basically our story it sort of yeah. chronicles the rise and fall of of their marriage yeah and I'm not spoiling it you can look up his yeah. history and understand that they're not currently married but mm -hmm. and it also then chronicles the rise of his career exactly it's sort of in parallel yes so talk about this film Jared uh, what did you think this um, this is a devastating film to watch at times yeah uh, because you're watching I mean if you don't know Stephen Hawking then why are you even watching this review but yes. uh, he's a, a he suffers from ALS, or as motor neuron disease, as it's referred to in the film, Lou Gehrig's disease. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 it's, uh, it hits him really early in his life. Yeah. I mean, he's still at Cambridge, uh, mid-60s, and, and he goes down, and it starts to take its toll on him. And he's only given two years to live, but obviously he has surpassed that prognosis by quite a lot. He's 72 now, yeah, uh, and he was probably, what, early 20s then. So, so crunch some numbers. Uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, two years and then some, but you watch him degrade yeah. over time in this film, and it's just, it, it, even though it's an actor playing this part and, and, and having to sort of get into the physicality of Stephen Hawking, you know, you... Which he mimics, by the way, with incredible accuracy. It's, it's pretty uncanny yeah. how good Eddie Redmayne is at pulling off the Stephen Hawking look. And he 
Yes, uh, yeah. hire him to uh, play Bill Gates in the next. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> geez, I mean, either There's, one. They look, maybe. they look very similar. It's ridiculous. But I, if you can just imagine what it's like for for the actual people to to go through that and just. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's, it's challenging, and you're talking about a time when the technology to deal with someone who. Yeah. Who doesn't have, who loses their motor skills and eventually their ability to speak? Uh, very challenging. It's a I whole mean, lot different in the 2000s yeah. than what it would be in the late 60s. Exactly. And 70s and, and 80s and 80s and 90s. Yeah. I mean, you sort of see. We take it takes it all the way up through him getting his his, his uh, mechanical voice or whatever you call it, yeah. his synthesized speech, which he still has that same voice, which is interesting. Thank he must you. have really really latched onto that and just uh, sort of accepted it as this is my voice now and I don't want to change yeah. it. So you hear him in interviews now; he still has that same voice. You know, if if the film is accurate, I'm not 100 percent sure that it is, yeah. but uh, I mean, there are there's better voice synthesis out there. But he's elected for you know his own reasons to keep it the way it is because that's who he is now, so yes. bravo, I guess. So, the movie, I think, has acted well. Um, well? What's that? I want to say it was fantastic. Yes. Okay. Yes, it was acted well. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, Eddie Redmayne is, as we said, in the conversation for uh, a best acting nod, and I say deservedly so. Um, He's you know. pretty impressive. It, it's interesting, though, that the movie also... As Steven loses his voice, yeah, sort of, and you know his mobility, and then his, I mean, prior to that, it, it sort of pivots towards the towards his wife, where you where right. you know it's not just about him. Absolutely, it's so, about. I mean, it is about the two of them, and, story. and she gets a good chunk in the middle when, yeah, when Steven isn't able to you know, move around as much and, and, and speak as much, uh, the story sort of shifts focus a little bit to her and the sort of the stuff that's going on in her sure. life. Um, and obviously we, we get the we get the evidence of the strain between them, yeah. what eventually leads uh, to them separating. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think it's done with a really deft hand, and, and there's a lot of, you know, they're English, so they're not the sort of... Uh, people who are, are going to have big uh, outbursts of emotion, like we Americans. So there's a lot of a lot of subtlety, a lot of sort of knowing glances. There's a scene um, where they're at Stephen's family's house, and there's a lot of lot of looks, a lot of sure. you know, people sort of are wondering if there's something going on between uh, Jane and the the sort of helper helper Jonathan character. Um, and it, it, you know it's all very English, but it, that's probably about as big sure. of outburst of, of, of real emotion that you see in the film. So it's all everything's very subtle, and I, I think I really like that. It's quiet. It's a quiet film. There's no yes. question about it. It's quiet. Um, you're not getting big swings of anything. It just goes along. It's it does. English, and it's English. <laughs> So there you go. Um, I really enjoyed the cinematography in this film. Sure. Early on, you get a lot of there's a lot of like uh, insert shots of of hands and feet, uh, sort of uh, foreshadowing what we all know is coming. Uh, but I think it was really a nice little touch. They also uh, do a lot of shots where you're looking at people through glass or yes. through windows, and then oftentimes the windows are are distorted or you know glazed over. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't really know what that means, but it's there, and it was, <laughs> I, that's something I noticed. So no, no, absolutely, yeah. There's a lot of times you'll get you'll get a window, uh, windows in the background, and they'll be the, the panes will be mismatched. Um, and there's there's the scene where he's getting his diagnosis or prognosis from the doctor, and there's sort of a haze yeah. over the whole thing, and yeah. Um, I agree. I'm not 100% sure what the meaning of it is, but I know that there is probably a... There's an intention there. Yes. Um, and so if you Deliberate think about choice. it, I'm sure we'll come across a yes. reason for it. So, yes, um, this movie will be in the, in the uh, in the conversation, as you said, for award ceremony. Uh, I, I would almost say you've got a Best Actor nomination out of this, don't yes. you? I mean... I I mean, it seems like a bit it's of a, a no-brainer. To no me, it was a, it's a film. fantastic performance. Uh, the subtlety that he has to pull off at times when, when, when he can't just say what he's feeling, he has to do it all with his eyes or yep. with a, you know, a flick of his eyebrows or, or just, you know, 
small little gestures to sort of convey what he's feeling, and, and I think he's successful. Yeah, it's an impressive acting feat. There's no question about it. Mm -hmm. you know what else and Felicity is? Jones is great, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody put in a pretty good performance. She's, I mean, she's film. playing a character who, who basically sort of jumped in expecting this to be a two-year battle with someone she's fallen in love with, and it ends up being decades. Uh, and so you, you have to, she just plays this character with, yeah. you can see the frustration and the devastation uh, right on her face. It's it's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, uh, why don't we stop talking about this film and start giving it a score? The Soup Score is three and one half stars. So three and a half stars, Jared. As we pull in the driveway. What timing, huh? I wasn't, you know, I wasn't expecting this movie to, to kind of affect me the way it did. I was, I was feeling the emotions. I was, I was feeling the feels, as the kids say. Wow. I really was. I was, uh, you know, actually close to tears at times. Wow. I, I'm not afraid that, to admit it. So, you know, alert the press. That's really the news story. I think some of the, some of the early, not early, but some of the bits of, of reviews that I've read sort of indicate that maybe it isn't. Well, it wouldn't affect me this way, but uh, I'm not afraid to admit it. Well, you're, I got a little choked up. You're a man's a man. Teary. You're a man's man. Oh, yeah. So uh, we've wrapped up the review, Jared. Please tell everyone how they can contact us. Well, if you'd like, like to, us. if you'd like to donate to my uh, replace my arm fund because this camera is getting a little heavy. Uh, no, it's an <laughs> eight pound camera. You can uh, like, comment, and subscribe. That's the best thing to do. I'm sure. Looking at the camera, Tony. Me too. <laughs> so uh, for Jared, I'm Shane. This is the scope. We'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves once again at the end. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I know I have. Fear not, Scope Faithful. The days shall pass as if they were but a moment. And Jared, Adam, and Shane will return with another thrilling episode. Until then, send your comments to comments at thescopeshow.com or leave a voicemail message by dialing... 612-217-2673. Thanks for listening, faithful fans. This is Tony Partington saying, Arrivederci. Tune in next time to another terrific edition of The Scope. Scope.